One of my viewers asked me, hey Daniel, is it possible to do the annoying orange effect in Filmora? I, I guess this would be a yes. If you want to learn how to do this effect in Filmora 9, stick around. I'll show you how. Squeeze me. See what happens. Hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell to be part of the conversation. This effect is a little more advanced, but it doesn't have a lot of pieces to the puzzle. You just have to be patient and take your time putting it together. The first thing you'll need is a picture of an orange. Bring that down into your timeline, but don't put it in the main track. Lift up one and put it into a track above it to create a second track. Now you're going to want to stretch that image out fairly long, depending on how much of a clip you're going to create. I'll pull it out to here for the time being. Now you're also going to need a piece of footage of yourself speaking your lines. This was my footage right here, and I have to tell you, it was really tricky to pull this off because the real trick to making this work is staying very still. If you look, I actually put a cutting board up under my chin to hold myself in place as best I could. Not moving is the most important part of creating this footage. And try to get some even light directly on your face. It might seem a little harsh when you're filming, but when you go to do this effect, it'll make things a lot easier. Bring that footage down into a track below the orange footage. Now all you're gonna try to do is actually have your face appear behind this orange. So the first thing I did here was I left clicked on the orange track in my timeline, went up to the compositing tab and dialed the compositing back so I could see my face through it a little bit. That will help me better position my face on the orange to make it feel a little more balanced. Now lock your orange track so that it doesn't move and up in the preview window, left click and start aligning your face so that it fits your orange image a little bit better. Now the size of the eyes I wanted was probably somewhere around here, but they're very wide. So don't be afraid to skew your image. I made my face very narrow. The thing I noticed about Annoying Orange is all the features were exaggerated. So don't feel like you have to keep all of the aspect ratio of your face footage correct. You can skew this any way you want. In fact, I'm gonna make these eyes a little taller. Once you have that about where you want it, unlock your orange track, and in the upper left, click on the Effects tab. Over in the left, choose Utility, and then grab your mask track and bring that down onto your orange track so that it overlays the entire track. You've now added a mask to the orange track. And this is really the trick to all of this. We're gonna be creating some layers of masks. Now double left click on the orange track in your timeline and it should open up your image tab in the upper left. If you scroll down, you'll see video effects and you can see where that image mask has been applied. Now it presets to this round image, but if you scroll down and you click Invert Mask, then it's going to reverse the way that mask is set up, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. You can use a circle, but I actually use this somewhat oblong, spiky, oval shape. It just seemed to work for me. But use whatever shape works for you in this next step. In the control panel right below those shapes, you can shrink the width, and you can shrink the height of those masks. And you can also control the positioning of the mask with the X and Y. All I did was use those to place that mask over my eye. Keep shrinking till you got about the right shape that seems to work for what you're trying to do. Now all those little spikes in the mask aren't exactly what I want, but I chose that because when I add the feather to this, which means the edges will be softer, it seemed to do a really cool thing. So let's crank up that feather to 100%, and if we scroll up, we can turn the compositing back up. And now you'll start to see what happens. See how that eye is showing through? We can do some fine tuning here and get the height to be a tad smaller and maybe the width in just a touch. Now I've got that eye taken care of. Now here's the cool thing. You're not limited to adding just one mask to your orange track. You can go right back in and in the upper left under the effects tab, grab the image mask again and bring another one down and overlay it onto your track. Now we're gonna repeat the exact same process. Left click on the orange track in your timeline, scroll down to the mask section, and you'll now see that you not only have one image mask under the video effects, but you have a second one applied. So let's choose this image mask and do the exact same modification. We'll invert it. I'm gonna choose that same shape, and I'm going to realign it so it's over my other eye. 
If you need to do fine tuning, you can actually type in the numbers one at a time to get these masks to move exactly where you want them to. Let's bring the feathering up on that edge. And now it starts to look like my orange has two eyes coming through it. Now here's some things that you can do to really sell this effect. Grab your entire orange track and move it up one. In the upper left, under media, choose sample colors and then choose orange and bring it down into that newly opened track in the middle. Stretch it all the way out. And if you left click on that up in the upper left in the compositing tab of this orange track, dial back the compositing. What this does is it gives it a slightly orange tinge that will help the eyes blend in better. Now, I don't particularly like the normal setting. I chose darken and it seemed to do a better thing. So the blending mode in darken was what I chose, but you have plenty of options to try something that might work better with your particular footage. Add another mask onto the track of your orange, left click on it and in the upper left, choose a different shape. In my case, because I have facial hair, I chose more of a circle shape. I make sure that mask is inverted and resize that one as well. Now, if you notice, my mouth is too low for this particular shape. Again, this whole annoying orange thing is based on convoluted facial shapes. So the way we'll get my mouth to actually show up in the orange is I'm gonna move these other tracks up one apiece. I'm going to right click on my main footage. I'm gonna choose copy, select track two, and paste that right in. So it's stacked right on top of my other track. Now this is where it gets a little funky. Pay attention to what I do here. Let me turn off the other two tracks and let me make sure all of the tracks are locked except for my new copied main footage. I'm gonna click on that up in the upper right preview window and move that up and start resizing just so I get my mouth. If I turn the orange track back on, unlock it and click compositing, I can dial back this overlay and start figuring out the right positioning for it. Let me lock that again and start moving this mouth footage where I think it should be. It's a little too stretched out. Let me distort it so it's a little shrunken down. And maybe something like that might work a little better. But there's another trick I need to add here. It's covering up my bottom track where the eyes were properly aligned. So the way to solve that is up in the upper left, let's grab another mask and bring it down onto our copied footage of our face. Left click on that track and in the upper left, once again, you'll see the options for mask under the video effects. And let's choose this narrow band mask. I only want my mouth to show and if I turn off the other track, I can more easily get that dialed in. I want the height to be a little more narrow and I need to drop it down so it's just exposing my lips and my beard and it's not covering my eyes. Maybe somewhere in there might work. When I turn the other track on, my eyes are in the right place. So I'm using two different face tracks to composite my face into this orange. Let me click OK, lock these other tracks, and let's unlock the orange track and go back to that newest mask that I added for my mouth and beard. Let me change this around a bit so it makes a little more sense. A little taller would probably work. A little wider might work. Let's see if I can get that into position around my mouth. Again, let's incorporate the edge feather so that it's got a little bit more smooth transition into the orange. And then again, in the orange track up above, let's turn the opacity back up so the orange is not translucent at all. And you start seeing the facial features come together. Now, really all this is is spending some time dialing in these masks and getting them to align the way you want. Don't forget to turn your orange track back on and it will help pull off this effect. That's pretty close right there, but you see where I'm going with this. Get these dialed in. One thing I noticed watching the actual Annoying Orange YouTube channel is a lot of times the eyes didn't really move. And I realized they did that because it's very hard to hold your entire face in place. So one trick you can do to deal with that is go down to the track that actually has your eyes, which is the lowest track, right click on that and choose Add Freeze Frame. What that'll do is it'll freeze the eyes in place and you can stretch that out as long as you want. What that effectively does is it holds your eyes in place while it allows the mouth to move as it needs to. If you wanna have the eyes move, just pick a section where you may have blinked or moved your eyes in a different direction, leave that in and freeze frame the rest. Once you're done, you'll have an effect that looks like this.
If you have any questions about this effect, be sure to ask them in the comments section below. And if you want to learn more Filmora tips, tricks, and techniques, be sure to click the video that's on screen now or the ones I've got pinned down below. Peace.